And I heard somebody on the day of the day talking about, well, we need to do something about the environment and cause all of this. And I'm sitting back there and I'm saying, this is the way summers used to be. Right, right, right. Yeah, man, I don't remember summers like this. I don't, I don't remember them more cool summers we can get in a few years of that. And I, the good thing about it was, when we went through these summers, we didn't all have air conditioning. No, no, no. Amen. We had them big box, box fan that right. you put in the front of the door and left the screen door open and let the air come in. Didn't have enough sense to know it was going to blow in hot air. <laughs> but it comforted us. Right, right. Come on now. It made us feel good. Amen. And now we got air conditioning in every room and central air. And we complain because it's too hot. Ooh, Jesus, all right. Now, 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 now,
I want to start at the 18th verse. This is Paul's letter to the Corinthians. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, y'all. Yeah, you're right. First Corinthians, I'm in second. Finite. We have a finite mind. That means that mind is 
preached the cross. I remember some weeks ago, my boss at work. There was another guy was talking, and, they, and the boss said to the guy, How can a dead man save you from your sin? He was trying to bring you keep upon the name of Christ. Normally, I don't jump in other folks' conversation. But when the Spirit moves me, I'm going to jump as high as I can. And I bust in there, I said, because he's not dead. Amen. I said, a dead man can't save me from my sin. But the one who died didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. Amen. And he's alive forevermore.
we look at the perfect heart of God through Jesus Christ. God's love is revealed perfect. Amen. See, the biggest problem we had was God had entrusted our purpose to a man named Adam. They let me clear, clear that up. To a man and a woman named Adam. Amen. And that man and woman named Adam messed us up. Yes. They thought they didn't have to listen to what God said. They thought it was okay to listen to what somebody else said. Maybe the serpent infiltrated by Satan. Amen. And so, God said, if you eat of the tree, you'll surely die. The devil said, if you eat of the tree, you won't surely die. So it wasn't just a test of Adam and his wife and whether or not they was going to eat of the tree. It was a test. Will I obey God or will I obey them? Amen. They decided to disobey God. And because of that disobedience, Man fell into sin. Mm -hmm. And since God is holy, he had to separate himself from man. Now man looking and everything he sees is from a view of sin. You know, they used to say about to wear rose colored glasses. But we were born with sin colored glasses. Mm -hmm. Everything we see, we see it through the eyes of sin. Mm -hmm. And that's when I just don't understand how some of us, people that don't know God, we're so willing to take what they say. Without any suspicion. Without any testing, we just accept what men who don't know God say. And the Bible says that they are fools and what they tell you is foolishness. Well, you know what? Paul showed us the Lord. God did not his son, his only son, for your sin. Yeah. It's children of love. That's love. Yeah. Oh, Paul, come ahead and talk. I mean, I know back in the 1960s, everybody decided we were going to get into the love movement. Mm -hmm. Everybody was talking about, talking about free love. Don't realize. See, that shows you how foolish they are. Love, man. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When I was a little boy, I lived in my mom and daddy's house. I cut the lights on, go to the room, go to that TV, get all the things I wanted to do. Open up the refrigerator, get the food, step out the refrigerator. All this stuff was free to me. It was free to me. But guess what? Somebody had to pay for it. Although it was free to me, somebody had to pay for it. They probably don't talk about free love. Love might be free to you, but somebody paid for that love. None of you of the cross is God's justice. You know, people in the world, they love to talk about the love of God. But that same God that loves, He perfectly loved, He perfect and just.
justice. And folks don't like to talk about that. That's like saying, Lord, you know, sometimes we pray, Lord, just give me what I deserve. Don't you ever pray that prayer. Because you don't ever want what you deserve. Amen. If anything you pray, you might say, Lord, have mercy. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Not just for the things I know I did, but that's the things I don't even know I did. No, I thought about it. Lord, have mercy on me. Amen. Crying out just. Go to Martin Gallagher Street, we won't just, nor you don't. The only people make rules out of it. See, what I told you, the world is foolish. They think like fools. They act like fools. They pray like fools. Because they think they're the only ones that can help you. Because they think they can help you. 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 They think they can They're not a crop of justice, they don't want to know. But they know that if they knew what justice was, if God would give us justice, everything he gave Christ, it would do us. We said, Lord, don't give it to Christ, give it to me. For me. Cross shoulder. Justice of God. And you know what? God is just glorified him just like his love and his mercy. Amen. God is not a schizophrenic. He's not part love, part justice, part this. He's perfect justice, perfect love, perfect mercy. Everything about him is perfect. He's everything he is in the perfection that it is. That is because he chose that mercy. But justice is due. He's told Moses, I have mercy on who I will have mercy, and I have compassion on those who I will have compassion. But see, justice is due. He cannot overlook his justice. He, that sin that we have committed, we, God cannot.
across ten streets. That was God's perfect holiness. It was in opposition against being sinless. And you know what? Because we were sinful, because we were messed up, because we was damaged goods, we couldn't do nothing about it because we couldn't go into the presence of God even if we wanted to. We were sinful and sin came not come into the presence of God. So we was blocked out. We was left out. We could not ever come to the throne room. Uh -huh. And the throne room is where we needed to go to get mercy. Yeah. His holiness kept us separated from him. Mm. But when Jesus suffered the justice of God uh -huh. upon Calvary's cross, he invoked the holiness of God. You know what the Bible said? When Jesus died and said it's finished, there was a veil in the temple that separated the holy of holy place from the holy place. The people and the priests there could go in the holy place, but they could not. Only the free high priest could go in the holy of holy because the veil separated them from the presence of God. But when Jesus said he's finished, that veil was rent in high because In the book of Revelation, John says this. But it is in chapter 12, chapter he says, when it comes to the throne of God, and there was a seat that separated the throne of God. But then when you go to the latter chapter, Revelation about the 19th chapter, and it reads, and there was no more seat. In other words, that seat that separated us from the throne room of mercy, that seat that separated us from the holy God, the seat that separated us from all that God is, has now been removed, and we can approach the throne of God, and we can approach it in mercy and not in justice. Amen. Amen. Jesus, perfect son. Not only represent, but it represents the answer to all your problems. See, we think we got to still get these things answered. You know, you know what's on the story, you ain't got to say it. But you know what? We think we need to get an answer for this, an answer for that, there's an answer for this. That we go to the Bible and look for remedies. So we can get clean. But I'll tell you something. You won't do dirty until you leave it. You gonna be dirty, nasty, and sin till you leave it. John said. He that says he has no sin, he's a liar. The truth ain't him. Because you got this nature. You ain't shared this nature. What God did was, because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross of heaven, he was able now to take out that stony heart that had you dead and in your trust. See, the only reason you even have a desire to cry out unto God 
It's because of the cross of Amen. You didn't even know the way to God. That's when Jesus said, I'm the way. You think you can get there by all the things you do, but you can't get that. Only way you can come to the Father is by me. Amen. It was a great cause. But it accomplished the purpose of God. Amen. God delivered us from a devastating things. All of mankind was on their way to the end. Because Adam purpose. But Jesus came. Mm -hmm. And Paul said he was the second Adam. Mm -hmm. And where the first Adam failed, this second Adam completed. Amen. Where the first Adam disobeyed God, mm -hmm. the second Adam perfectly obeyed God. Amen. Where the first Adam left us in sin, the second Adam put us in righteousness. Mm -hmm.
false tales of things. False tales of things. You know, they just have a song. And they just say, I don't know why. Jesus loved me. I don't know why he cared. I don't know why he sacrifices my life. See, I don't know all the plan of it, but I'm glad he did. Amen. Yes. I don't need to know everything. I just need to know the person who knows everything. Amen. I don't need to know the whole plan of God. I just need to trust him who got the plan in his hand. Amen. I don't need to know every step. I, I just need to know who's ordering my step. Amen. Right. Let me get out of here and cross on Jesus bring us to a saving relationship. You know what? I don't know about anybody here. But sometimes I don't feel saved. Ain't even because of nothing I've done. Sometimes within me I just don't feel saved. But you know what? Thanks be to God, my salvation is not based on my feelings. Amen. Amen. I don't have to feel saved. I trust God that I am saved. Yes. My salvation is in the trust, not in the feelings. Amen. Sometimes I want to feel hungry. And I'll be hungry. So sometimes my feelings are deceiving me. Yes. But one thing I know, the word of God will not deceive me. I can trust what God said. And God said, you are justified. It is just as if you never sinned. Come Jesus to everything that you've done. Everything that Adam did. Moses, Abraham, and nailed it to the cross. Yeah. Amen. No longer do I shut up. 